How would you feel if you lived in a world where fantasy stories were boring, uninteresting, and frowned upon? That was exactly how fantasy was viewed in the late 1800s and early 1900s. On July 29, 1954, the first book of the Lord of the Rings series, The Fellowship of the Ring, came out. The book came rapidly to the public's attention and received a mix of good and bad feedback, which in turn broke the barriers of people's view of fantasy. The author of the book, John Ronald Roll Tolkien, whom we know as J.R.R. Tolkien, stunned the world with a flawless and fascinating fantasy story, breaking the barriers of how old fantasy was written and leading the fantasy society into a new era. In the common tongue, it says, one ring to rule them all. One ring to find them. One ring to bring them all. And in the darkness, find them. Today, if you search up famous fantasy books, you will notice that the first book series that pops up is The Lord of the Rings. Although some amazing works such as Alice's Adventures in Wonderland and The Wonderful Wizard of Oz existed before The Lord of the Rings series, Tolkien transcended furthermore into the depth of imagination and broke the barriers of old fantasy, opening the gateway to modern fantasy. You're late. A wizard is never late, Frodo Baggins. Nor is he early. He arrives precisely when he means to. The famous author J.R.R. Tolkien was born on January 3, 1892 in Bloemfontein, South Africa to Mabel and Arthur Tolkien. In 1895, he and his parents, along with his newborn brother, Hilary Tolkien, moved back to England. When Tolkien was four, his father passed away due to rheumatic fever and the heavy burden of supporting a whole family was left to Mabel Tolkien. Although the family lost an important member, Tolkien and his brother were homeschooled and educated very well by their mother. Tolkien was taught botany and Latin, which helped to develop his love for nature and language. Eight years later, his mother passed away and the care for the boys was left in the hands of a priest of a Catholic church, Father Morgan, who raised J.R.R. Tolkien and his brother Hilary. He taught them virtuous moral values and the Catholic religion, which established roots in Tolkien's later literary works. Growing up, Tolkien was educated at King Edward's school and was trained as a cadet. He continued his journey of learning until he graduated from Exeter College, Oxford as a first-class honor student. His love for language continued to grow even after he joined and demobilized from the army that fought in World War I. At the age of 33, he became a professor at Oxford and a private tutor for the students of Lady Margaret Hall and St. Hugh's College. There, his writing journey began. Rumor has it that on a regular day in the early 1930s, Tolkien was sitting in front of his table and almost as a whim, he wrote down on the blank test paper. In a hole in the ground, there lived a hobbit. It was later revealed that even Tolkien himself had no idea what a hobbit was at that time. The need for exploring the world of imagination filled his mind. Thus, he picked up his pen and began this project. Now before all this happened, Tolkien took an interest in mythology throughout his whole life, and according to Dr. White, a professor at Azusa Pacific University, Tolkien was especially interested in Norse mythology to the extent that he gathered a group of people together to read and discuss the sagas. He even wanted to read the stories in the saga's original language because of his love and passion for language. His love of mythologies inspired him to do something that had not yet been done. He created a completely different fantasy world, well known today as the Middle Earth. Before The Hobbit, fantasy was what we call low fantasy, where fantasy elements are established based on our world. Famous fantasy stories written before The Hobbit, such as the previously mentioned books, Alice's Adventures in Wonderland and The Wonderful Wizard of Oz, all qualify as low fantasy. Tolkien's works broke the barriers of fantasy and completely opened up people's eyes and minds to another form of fantasy called high fantasy or epic fantasy, where another world that is not related to our world is created. It's some form of elvish. I can't read it. There are few who can. The language is that of Mordor. <laughs> 
which I will not utter here. Tolkien's works also produced a basic theme for all modern fantasy writers where a character goes on a quest that is dangerous but exciting. Upon creating Middle-earth, Tolkien took some mythology elements and put them into his works to design a different fantasy story than others. That is why The Hobbit and The Lord of the Rings consisted largely of mythological elements such as dragons and elves. A lot of people ask, why is Tolkien so famous and why are his books so popular? Well, it wasn't the books themselves, but the ideas and beliefs that are displayed in his works. Who are you? Show yourself! Because of his Catholic faith, Tolkien believed that he himself was only the sub-creator of the Middle-earth, since he believed God made everything. All he did was borrow some of the Earth's elements, for instance, trees, mountains, valleys, and more. One of the main reasons Tolkien made up Middle-earth was because he believed that fantasy reveals the truth in a way in which reality cannot. Since the world tends to reflect more negative things than positive, he wanted to design a fantasy world that presented the truth in a more positive way which people could understand, breaking the barriers of old fantasy. An undeniable example of truth reflected in his works is the value of friendship shown between Frodo and Sam, which was actually inspired by the great friendship between Tolkien and C.S. Lewis. Eucatastrophe was a word that Tolkien made up specifically for fantasy. Eucatastrophe means a happy ending or a good disaster because you is a prefix meaning good and catastrophe means disaster. He called fantasy eucatastrophe because as Dr. White points out, he wanted to emphasize that when something really, really bad happens, in God's world, it's never the end. It's never the final defeat. Tolkien broke the barriers of how old fantasy stories were written and was the first to use the eucatastrophe technique in fantasy stories. This idea became the basis of another commonplace event in modern fantasy where the main characters end up happy and successful after undergoing a long and difficult journey. It was Tolkien's incredible ability and passion for constructing a world that stunned every one of his readers. Tolkien was a spontaneous writer and thus did not have a specific plan for his stories. He would often crumple the versions that he disliked and toss them on the ground, then go on to another version until he's satisfied with his writings. Tolkien's son, Christopher Tolkien, once said that there are so many notes left over from his father that he could have written an entire different version of Silmarillion with no repetition, an entirely different story. Tolkien was able to create this amazing world in his head, and he developed languages for this made-up world. He developed genealogies, going back generations and generations. He wrote the whole history. Tolkien did something that nobody had ever done before. He was the first to create a whole world for a fantasy story, breaking the barriers of fantasy, and in doing so, he inspired many future fantasy writers with his creation of the high fantasy genre. Tolkien and his works inspired and influenced many people. George R. R. Martin, author of The Game of Thrones, and Philip Pullman, author of The Golden Compass, were both inspired by Tolkien. As the first to break through the barriers of old fantasy and create a new style of fantasy, Tolkien proved to others that fantasy can be interesting and fascinating just like mythologies. He was the originator of high fantasy and created a multitude of common themes that are used in most modern fantasy books, such as Harry Potter. Tolkien was the first author to ever develop a world just for fantasy, and he certainly broke through the barriers of old fantasy by creating a different and gripping piece of literature. He took the lead in modern fantasy by introducing high fantasy and setting up examples of how fascinating this genre can be breaking the barriers of fantasy and changing the world forever. <laughs>